Hey guys, Samuel Larsen here, and I am here with Mr. Sam Baldwin himself. And Sam Baldwin is the founder of e-commerce. They do Google ads for e-commerce. So recently I made uh, this video about Google ads and testing Google ads. And seems like you guys really like this. And this is a topic where we don't usually cover this on the channel since it's uh, traffic related. We work on the post traffic. However, in this kind of case, I just had to reach out to Sam and uh, get him to this one so I can pick his brain. And he, I'm sure he has a ton of valuable things to share. So welcome to the channel, Sam. Oh, thanks so much for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. Yeah, we are also like uh, Sam and Sam, but uh, we share <laughs> a common things uh, in terms of uh, our lifestyle. So Sam is also a digital nomad, currently living in Sydney with uh, a little bit of travel restrictions. But uh, I know like uh, neither of us wants to stay in uh, the same place for too long. So you've been all over Brazil, Mexico, Holland, United States. And uh, I'm sure you're going to want to continue that from that lifestyle, right? So, Oh, definitely. I miss it so much. I can't wait to get back overseas when the time is right. Yeah, it's uh, almost like an addiction. But yeah. Then, your other addiction is uh, Google Ads and Google Ads. helping e-commerce merchants succeed. And, okay? Definitely, yeah. Google Ads, um, it's still it's still a bit of the wild, wild west for e-commerce store owners. Google Shopping in particular, it's... It can be insanely profitable. It can scale up and scale up your store and can just be so, so helpful for getting your store off the ground or boosting up an existing store as well. It's, it's fantastic. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so let's um, take a step back from that too, because uh, many of the people here actually, like they're probably running Facebook ads or mm. they're active on like uh, some SEO or something like that. But the, some of the people might not know that much about Google ads. So mm. I'm interested, like what kind of ads can you run right now? And uh, a little bit of the basics of uh, Google ads themselves. Definitely, definitely. So as a lot of people are aware, Google uh, ads that you put on the Google network, you can put uh, on the search results, you can put them uh, on the display network, which is all over the web where blogs and other news websites, they actually can host Google's ads. So when you go to the Google platform, you can buy banners that you can put on specific websites, blogs and what have you. You can also even run YouTube ads, ads on Gmail as well. And you have so many, so much control and so many settings that you can manipulate, just like with Facebook ads, about where you want your ads to show, how much you wanna pay for those ads, what products you wanna advertise, and if you do know how to manipulate Google in the right way, it can be incredibly profitable for your e-commerce store. Really, really fantastic. I find generally that for new stores or for people new to Google ads, I generally recommend having a branding campaign, uh, a shopping campaign. Definitely. Generally, we see for our clients that the shopping campaign generates 60 to 70% of the revenue for the entire Google ads account for that e-commerce store. And it does so generally at a very profitable return on ad spend then say regular search campaigns. And the reason is because people can actually see the product, a photo of it, the name, the price, and even reviews if you get reviews installed by the Merchant Center as well. And it, it could just, generally the click-through rates are lower, but when people do click, they already know some a lot about the product that the conversion rates are generally really, really good. The other big thing to say about that as well is that you get to take advantage of Google's algorithm. Similar to how Facebook has their own algorithm too, Google Shopping has a very powerful algorithm where you don't actually choose keywords. So maybe if you've ran uh, search campaigns before, you've used keywords where you actually choose what search queries you want to show for. With shopping campaigns, you don't have that privilege, but Google uses your feed, your actual product names, descriptions to figure out who to show them to. The advantage here is that Google will show them to all these people based on their own algorithm, and you can end up getting way more traffic, way more clicks from valuable people, people that are searching for your product that you may otherwise not have considered because you didn't know the keywords they were using. Hmm. Yeah, that's interesting because uh, I, as a almost like a digital marketing dinosaur, tend to get stuck a little bit on that, like uh, that Google is just Google search, mm -hmm. but uh, you have YouTube, you have Display Network, you can basically advertise almost anywhere with that, mm -hmm. right? So. Definitely. It's not just these uh, little text ads that come when you search for something on Google. And so it's good to update that knowledge as well. So, okay, we have all these options here. And uh, there's almost like too much to choose from. You can do YouTube, you can do Google Display Network, you can do search, everything. So um, in terms of starting, 
Um, what are some of the common beginner mistakes that uh, people should avoid? Let's say I want to start uh, Google Ads tomorrow with, for my e-commerce store. So mm. what should I be aware of? Definitely. Really good question. The first thing, the biggest thing, the most important thing is conversion tracking. You've probably heard this before, but man, it's like the amount of stores that I audit, their Google ads account, and they don't have conversion tracking installed or let alone confirmed or set up properly. It's insane. And the problem is that you're paying all this money to Google. It's called pay per click marketing. You're paying for those clicks and you want to keep that data. Even if you don't get any sales, you want to get that data and know Okay, what's actually converting? What keywords, what products, how much you're paying, what's your return on ad spend? If you don't have conversion tracking set up properly, it, 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 there's a little bit of data in there, demographic data, but largely so much of it is a waste. And that's the biggest mistake I see because without conversion data, you can't optimize. You don't know what to change because in Google, just like you said, there's so much to do. There's so many levers and it's very, very confusing for beginners. But when you have conversion data, suddenly you can have waypoints. You, you can have a break-even return on ad spend. You can have a break-even CPA. You can know exactly how much to spend on what campaign um, to get this specific result, and you can optimize it for your advantage. And that's why as part of conversion tracking, it's so important to know your financials. So really understanding your profit margin for your store, understanding your break-even ROAS. And that's calculated by getting your getting one divided by your net profit margin. That gives you your break-even ROAS. That's going to guide everything you do in the account. You're going to know if the campaign's working or not. And it's so important to know that stuff because most stores, they're just flying blind and they wait till the end of the month, see if they've got the money to buy new stock. Um, and sometimes that, you know, you don't want to be running at a loss and just hoping that the rest of your platforms, organic, Facebook, what have you, picks up the loss from Google. And we see that the stores that do know that stuff, their financials, and they have conversion tracking installed. It's this beautiful snowball where month, month after month, they know how much they can invest in other parts of their store, but as well, how much they can invest into ads. Should they just put more budget in, more, more money into that Google ads account? Because it's working. And uh, that's so, so powerful. You just They just dominate the competition because you know I'm sure you understand this, that the, the stores that just win at digital marketing are those that can spend more than their competitors to acquire a customer. And you can only know that if you know your financials. That's, that's why it's so, 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 so important. So yeah, that, those are the biggest mistakes that I see. And they're really easy to fix. It, it, yeah, it's so, so easy. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah, many store owners, they're just optimizing politely. Like uh, mm. they didn't take care of the basics. And uh, yeah, you also, of course, you want to jump into the Google Ads and it's like, start mm -hmm. running. Let's start making money, right? But then um, if you didn't take care of your tracking, like now you have no idea where you are. You're just like mm. going somewhere. And the another thing you mentioned there that was really interesting is attribution. So you have mm. all these uh, channels. And uh, before it used to be like uh, half my marketing spend is wasted. I just don't know which half. But that mm. doesn't need to be the case anymore, right? So it's uh, we live in a better world now and uh, mm. we should take advantage and the way to take advantage is like do it these things right so okay so that's uh, that's very interesting so first uh, that step obviously and even if you change uh, to an agency or freelancer eventually you have that data then for them right so mm. that uh, that helps okay yeah you mentioned their facebook ads and uh, this is very common you already have facebook uh, ads and now you want to start with Google Ads. Let's uh, diverse a little bit. Like if I get banned from Facebook today, I have something else going for me. So mm. what uh, should be the first steps there? What should people do when uh, they already have some success on another channel and now they want to start with Google Ads? Definitely. Good question. So I, a lot of our clients do come over from Facebook ads. They're finding that it gets very competitive or their account gets banned again and again. So they jump over to Google uh, because generally it's changing a little bit now, but generally it's much easier to get your account live without the suspensions and errors. Generally for new stores, I recommend having a branding campaign set up first and then having a shopping campaign. Those two ones just first get them going. The reason I recommend a branding campaign, and this is also a bit contentious in the industry, and I'll give my reasons for having a branding campaign. A lot of people are going to say, okay, firstly, what is a branding campaign? A branding campaign is a, a search campaign when someone searches for your brand. If they search for my brand, key commerce, then my website shows up as a paid ad. And people are going to ask, a lot, maybe your subscribers are going to ask this, but what if we're already showing number one for organic? 
Well, it's a good question because I'm also showing up organically for key commerce as well as my paid ad. But especially once I start gaining traction and growing my store, my competitors are going to start bidding on my brand keyword, my brand name, key commerce. And suddenly when someone searches for key commerce, they're going to see all my competitors and then me as well. And maybe that's fine because you think, hey, they're only going to go to my brand. But here's the thing. When I run competitor campaigns for my clients and my own store, I can generally break even on those ads. So I can, I can always get customers and almost always I can actually make that campaign profitable. Well, if I can do that and steal their customers, they can do that for mine as well. So I want, especially those customers that are searching for my brand, they're at the very bottom of the funnel. Usually those customers, they've already gone through my shopping campaign or my search campaign, maybe even Facebook ads, and they're coming to Google to find me again to finally make that purchase. This is why those campaigns generally have a ROAS of 20 to 30. So every $1 you, you put in, you're going to get $20 to $30 out of it. Um, and so you want to make sure you grab them before your competitors. You spent all this money already, all this work, getting them through your site, through your brand, through that customer journey, get them at the end. That's really, really important. And then the second thing I'll do is set up a, a basic shopping campaign. So it means setting up a feed with Google Merchant Center. And this is a really painful process for a lot of e-com store owners. Um, I'll leave a link to, or you'll leave a link to a video below that I'll have a tutorial on how to do this. Uh, we're also working on a course that takes you through it step-by-step step and shows you how to optimize everything as well. But it is the biggest pain that everyone struggles with because Google is very finicky with letting people on their platform in terms of the product feed. It is quite simple to set it up in my opinion, but you just need to know exactly what to do and how to get past all the little barriers that Google sets up. And it's kind of a good thing they do this because it means that only the people that put in the work can actually get on Google Shopping. So a lot of times your competitors might not be even on there because they just can't be bothered to set all this up. And so a basic shopping campaign, once you set that up, you can optimize it. Um, and having that alongside your brand campaign is a beautiful beautiful a double strategy because people often come through the top of more close to the top of the funnel with the shopping campaign and then they're going to see the site and then come back later and click that brand campaign generally when we look at the attribution modeling report in google ads which tells us more about how many clicks people take to convert we'll generally see that for strong brand stores people will uh, on 30 to 40 percent of the time they'll take more than one click to actually convert meaning they'll click once view the product they won't convert 40% of the time, and then they'll come back the next time and actually then convert. And it's, um, it's, it's, it's really important to make sure that you have these multiple touch points in your funnel. You can set up remarketing campaigns, very, very powerful as well, but for new store owners, new people on Google ads, the branding and the shopping, that's often a lot to get started anyway, especially if you're new to it, it's very confusing. Just start with that. That's gonna have the biggest impact and the highest chance at coming out the gate with a profitable campaign. Okay, yeah. I like this uh, thinking there. You're not just a optimizing to get people for the site once, but rather it's the overall model and understanding mm -hmm. those different touch points that work there. And that's a, a really important, the overall strategy there. So good start. So in terms of uh, this, because um, many people that uh, know e-commerce a little bit more, they start to understand that it's uh, not always a one approach fits everything. And that's probably the case with Google Ads as well. There's, a, there's vastly different stores that my audience would have here. So you would have a, a store that, let's say, sells outdoor furniture. One might be a pet store, uh, different product pricing, etc. So the one question I'm the, probably the most interested in is like, what uh, type of stores should do Google Ads? What works mm. best right now? What kind of products, what kind of price points? Etc. Mm, that's a really, really good question. I'm going to show you some examples in a second. Generally, I'll say that e-com stores that are solving a specific problem that people are searching for generally perform pretty well. Okay, that's the biggest thing. And the ones that are clearly solving a very distinct problem, Google Ads is really just a medium to get those people to your site to then educate them and then get that conversion. So let me show you an example of a store that came to me for help and actually said, we don't want to, we can't work with you because it's just that yeah, we don't think your product is good for Google ads. And this is a really good example. So these All guys, right. they're an Australian brand. They've designed these like soy sauce lamps. So um, not sure about, you know, uh, in Australia, at least the, these sort of, that sort of uh, soy sauce packets are like everywhere. It's like for sushi and stuff like that. I'm not sure if that's a worldwide thing. It probably is, but uh, these, these guys, they designed that into a lamp. So they actually made these huge ones that um, it's in a soy little soy sauce bowl and it lights up and it's really, really cool. Well, 
Um, it's a really nice design. So that's the little soy sauce packets, soy sauce packets. It's really, really cool design. I love it. Super, super cool, modern, um, comes in really nice packaging. They put so much time into this product and designing it. The problem is I imagine this could work really well on Facebook because you can use a lot of content marketing and get it in front of people. But in terms of Google, no one is going to, very few people are going to Google look, searching for soy sauce lamp. That is incredibly niche, mm. so niche that they might just get 10 to 15 searches per month, if that. So what they would do is start a branding campaign. That would be a good thing because people are going to go on Facebook, mm. sign up for the email list, and then go through Google to actually search for the brand name, Heliograph. And that's when you can get them through Google ads. Also through remarketing campaigns on the display network. That could work really well. Potentially shopping campaigns with re, like as with remarketing audiences um, and showing to people that have visited the website before. Um, that could work really well as well. But there's not going to be nearly as much volume as other brands that are solving a specific problem. Here's an example of a store that is solving a specific problem. These are long, long-term clients of mine. They sell travel SIM cards um, for in Australia. So for different countries. So they're not very, you know, not it's not very um very applicable right now and you know with what's happening in the world for Australians because we're all locked yes. down um, but what they do is they sell these travel sim cards that you can use say if you're going to Europe the US then Aussies can buy these sim cards and it, it's ready to go as soon as they get to that country they pop it in their phone and they can start using their their, their cellular network straight away call an Uber call whatever um, without needing to use their passport to get a sim card at the airport which is the most frustrating thing ever and in Australia at least there's a big problem with roaming fees for the local cellular networks, the telecommunications companies. So they're solving a really big problem with a very affordable, high value product that people are directly searching for. That, you know, they would get hundreds of thousands of searches per month for these travel SIM cards. And they just killed it because all, all, what our job was to find those people that were searching, optimize for the bids, optimize the ads, optimize the products, and just get them to the right pages on the website. And this is a clear example where we were able to get a return on ad spend of you know 11 for the whole account, which for a lot of people, that's absolutely unheard of. And these guys have a great profit margin. So they did really well with that. It was fantastic for them. That's an example of people are directly searching for a solution to a problem. And these guys were then able to craft their whole site to match that, that, that need. And they started off with a website that looked quite different from this. But as they understood their audience, they were then able to go, okay, people keep searching for Europe SIM cards and they want this thing. They really worry about, you know, staying connected, being convenient and, and being affordable. So let's let's emphasize that on all the pages, the product pages, the homepage, and even the ad copy, we actually changed to match those people. It was all about need, serve, serving that need, need, serve that need. And that, that's what worked really well for Google ads. So if your store there, you're solving a similar need and it doesn't need to be like, this is a very, very good example, but even someone searching for fishing rods, that's a need. I need a fishing rod. I need this thing. I'm going to go search and look at all the different options available and choose based on whatever my you know inclination is. And so um, if people are searching for it, it's generally a good thing, especially if people have a clear problem and need, um, then that's fantastic. Okay, perfect. Yes, it's very interesting. So two completely different examples and mm. two completely different industries. However, the principle is the same. Okay, People are searching already for something. So they're pretty high intent. And now I'm first time hearing about soy lamp, but uh, and I'm <laughs> going and searching for one now. It's, uh, yeah. it's going to show up and uh, I'm going to be a high intent buyer. So <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, 100%. Well, yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, very interesting. So now we have, let's say we have our branding campaign set up. Hmm. We have done uh, our shopping campaign. Now, What's the next step? So what sort of regular work would we do on this Google Ads account? or And how much is needed? Uh, is it more like a setting up? Forget it, uh, mm. let Google handle its thing, or mm. how should we go about it? Definitely, good question. Google Ads is quite overwhelming for a lot of people. They feel like they're bashing their head against the wall because there are so many options and things to optimize. And there's a lot of data and it can be really frustrating to know, okay, what do I actually do to, to improve things here? There are things in the account that you should focus on more than others, uh, but generally Google ads behaves in such a way that it's the long-term small changes that make the biggest results in, the, in, the, in that long-term. That's what's so important is that we'll find that, you know, sometimes with a brand, a new store, we'll come out the gate with great shopping campaigns, the first ones ever run for that store. 
and they'll perform really well in that first month and they'll scale up very quickly. But usually it takes some time. And the reason is you're playing with Google's algorithm and there's so many things that you wanna be adjusting and changing, bidding, negative keywords, demographic bid adjustments, location adjustments, testing different ads, testing different ad copy, testing different product uh, information in the product feed, um, that it takes some time to really get these kicked in and dialed up and to, to scale over time. Google also is using their algorithm and they're looking at all the conversion data coming through the account and through those campaigns and they make their own changes on who actually sees these ads based on what converts and they're using all that data too. It's very, very powerful. What I'd recommend is if you're running your own, your own account and your own campaigns, I recommend checking it every day if you can. I know that that's a, a big ask for a lot of people that are also running the rest of their business, um, but just checking a few, few simple things each day. For example, making sure the credit card in your account doesn't bounce. As soon as that bounces, your ads are gonna stop and then you lose all that traffic and all that data. And it could be, it, it's, you know, you're just losing potential sales, especially if it's an account that's already profitable. You don't wanna do that. The next thing is always check your Google Merchant Center account. This is so important, uh, especially in the last few months, Google have been suspending stores like crazy. My team and I, we've been helping with this. We've created a guide on how to fix this suspension, but you need to check your Merchant Center account and fix disapprovals as soon as they come up. Sometimes if you leave it for a week or a couple of weeks, Google will actually stop your account. And it's, yeah, it's, it's not good. It's not, it's not super common, but it, it can happen, especially with huge, huge disapproval errors. Um, those are things you want to check every single day just to make sure that they're okay, so especially anomalies in the account as well. Big changes in um, your cost per click of, of, of your, your um, campaigns um, and any big anomalies, big changes in, in the data. Um, but over the long term, the next thing I'll focus on is the bidding. That's huge. If you're using a manual bidding strategy, which generally I recommend for new stores that are starting just so that you can have more control um, and just not overspend, which is what can happen with new, new campaigns with the automated bidding strategy. Um, and the bidding is generally your biggest lever when you're changing the, the campaign, especially at the start. Um, then once you get that dialed in, you can change over to an automated bidding strategy like target ROAS strategy. Um, but then there's other things you should do like adding negative keywords, which, which means going to your search terms report, looking, at, looking for irrelevant keywords, uh, search queries, and then adding them as, as negative keywords. And this is a process that you'll do potentially every week, every fortnight, depending on how much data comes through that account. People always ask, how often do I need to optimize? And the answer really is, it depends on how much data you have. Because you can't optimize and test things every day if you're getting five to 10 clicks a day because you just don't have enough data to make meaningful changes and uh, meaningful assumptions on, on the, those, that, those clicks, impressions or what have you. So that's really, really important that you, you do give it some time. And you know, media buying is a science and an art. And the science is all these strategies, all these things that you need to check and do. But as well, what comes with experience is this understanding of the art form um, where, you know, you're almost like you're kind of wrestling with Google in a, in a, in a weird way um, where you're trying to help push the algorithm and push the campaigns in the right direction so that Google actually does most of the work, uh, which is really what, what we do. Yeah, very interesting. We're getting to my favorite topic now, which is performance and uh, mm. probably the favorite topic of my audience, making money. So mm. First of all, um, uh, yeah, good stuff. In terms of uh, this, um, how can we know that the account is performing well? Because uh, the first thing that we would definitely would want to avoid is uh, overspending, mm. making these um, stupid mistakes, like you mentioned, like uh, spending money without getting a return, like not knowing the conversion tracking, etc. And uh, basically, how do we ensure that uh, our ad account is performing well and how do we even know if it is? Hmm. It's a really good question. So firstly, like I said before, conversion tracking, get that, get that installed yesterday as soon as you possibly can. So, so, so important. Make sure it's set up properly. The next thing, like I said before, is knowing your financials. You need to understand how much you can actually spend to acquire each of your customers, how much you can spend on your ads um, and how much you can spend per sale, per order. Um, and that's so, so important. Once you have that data and you have the break-even ROAS, I'll, like Sam, Samuel will leave a link in the description below to a video I made on how to calculate your break-even ROAS. Very, very oh, valuable. Yeah. It's a very simple video. Um, but yeah, it's really important to know that because once you have that metric, say if your profit margin is 30%, your net profit margin, it means your break-even ROAS is going to be 3.3. Uh, I think that that's what one divided by 30%, 3.3. Um, and so basically what that means is when you go into your account, 
you can look at any single level of your account because you have your campaign level, you have the ad group level, you have the keyword or the product level. You can look at any of those levels and actually see what is my return on ad spend, my ROAS. Is that higher than my break-even ROAS, which means it's actually a profitable campaign, ad group, keyword, what have you, or if it's below, that means it's not profitable and it's generating a loss for you generally. Uh, what I like about that method is that um, it doesn't tell you as much about the volume of profit or the conversions, but it tells you the the percent, almost like the percentage of profit per conversion, like how profitable it actually is, not in terms of volume, but actually like on a per conversion basis, uh, which is really, really better. Basically on like a per dollar basis, how much you spend and how much you're gonna get out of it to know if your account's performing well. Something that's a really good tip for when you're starting your campaigns and you don't know if they're profitable yet, don't have a thousand dollar budget, have 30 to $50 to start off with, especially for a shopping campaign. 30 to $50 is a good amount to start off with. Uh, for some people that's that's low, some people that's a lot, um, but that gives you a decent amount of clicks per day, especially if they're at 50 cents to $1.50, which is quite standard for e-commerce, depending on your niche. Um, keep the, cap, uh, the budget capped so that you don't overspend. Once you get that campaign's uh, ROAS above the break-even ROAS, so it is profitable, then you can start experimenting with increasing the budget as well. That can be really, really powerful. Um, and you'll be able to tell if you can increase the budget by looking at the search impression share. I keep plugging my videos, but there's another video I made on search impression share. <laughs> if Samuel's okay with link it, I'll, hopefully he'll link it below. <laughs> but um, I made a video on this one. Yeah. On, on, awesome. When you, when you know, you can actually increase that budget. And I go through what you can actually check in your account. Um, to do that. Uh, but if it's, pro that's the way I see it is if your campaign's profitable, especially with e-commerce, as long as you don't have a limited amount of stock, like um, you can just increase the budget of that campaign and you just get all those sales that you can while the going is good. That's what I recommend. Okay, perfect. Yeah. So it is, a, of course, a pay to play system. Um, yeah. And people need to be careful about their spending, but not be too afraid initially. So mm -hmm. $50, if you're looking to make uh, something long term it's a, a really small investment so mm -hmm. it's not something that uh, you should be afraid of uh, just a, a couple of months of shopify really mm -hmm. so yeah um it's a, sounds like it's a very good platform to test this initially right so definitely okay good good in terms of the timeline though so we have had uh, a lot of good initial strategies but just like uh, very briefly um what should i expect like how does it look like uh, when can I start seeing that, like if they have potential mm. and uh, when is it too early to say like, this doesn't work? Definitely, yeah, good question. Yeah, a lot of people get frustrated when in the first few days they don't get any sales or they might not even get clicks. So let me give you some timelines and what I always tell clients um, and what we see time and time again, on average as well, there are, there are definitely outliers, but on average, it takes about two weeks to get an idea of potential. And by potential, I mean, usually a couple of sales, but just knowing, okay, there's a lot of search data out there. There's a lot of people looking, there's a lot of people clicking, uh, people that click, uh, the people that view the ad often click, which means a high click-through rate, a high CTR. Um, then you get an idea of potential. Sometimes you can get a profit within two weeks. Sometimes it depends, but usually it takes about one to two months to get to that point. That, that's generally what we see. Mm -hmm. Things that can affect this is if you, uh, if you already have a strong brand. For example, we started working with this very strong brand that uh, hadn't done any Google ads before. We started their account from scratch and we started those campaigns and within the first week, I think it did 5K in profit, which was insane. It was just an absolutely mm -hmm. crazy result. Uh, we built the groundwork. We built the foundation of a great shopping campaign, search, remarketing and branding. But initially, because uh, their website converted so well, it's, it was absolutely incredible um, that all the, a lot of the traffic we got, you know, we got a lot of sales and it paid for our service immediately, like really, really quickly. They were, of course, a very, very happy client, but then it just grew from there ongoing. Um, but things that can really also work in the other direction, if you haven't optimized your website, if you haven't done CRO, you don't understand your customers and you've just got, you know, a general store with just a catalog of products, that's going to be so much harder to get off the ground and consistently uh, with the stores I've audited, with their Google Ads account, their, their Shopify store, the ones that are stuck in that purgatory of just breaking even barely or making a loss usually don't really understand who they're talking to. They've never met their customers. They've wow. never spoken to them on the phone or even on live chat. And they're just trying to sell these products to people. They have no idea who they are. So the copy just isn't relevant. The ads aren't relevant. Um, and they're competing with these brand stores that have been in the niche for five, 10 years that do really understand like if they're selling back massaging guns, they really understand 
who wants these, who uses them and why they want them and all this sort of stuff. And they're not just buying this product on, on a dropshipping site and selling it. it can, dropshipping is great. It can work. Don't get me wrong. But you need to, it's just a fulfillment model. You need to just like every business, understand who you're selling to um, and demonstrate the value in your product if you want people to hand over, your, over their money. Yeah, yeah, makes sense. Uh, those are pretty much the same things that we also go over on this channel a lot. Mm. Um, okay, just to wrap up, I wanted to uh, leave the best things uh, for the future. So I just have a couple of uh, good questions for you to begin mm. with. So I constantly see this. Uh, beginners, they just in it to make a quick profit here. Mm. But um, advanced people, they are actually optimizing not only for the profit today, but actually for the business value and uh, making a saleable asset out of it. So as we know, money is good, but automated money is a lot better. Mm. And uh, let's say I'm already a little bit more advanced. I don't want to handle the account anymore. Um, I'm more like an entrepreneur. I want to have somebody do it for me. So how can I hire somebody to run my account for me? Mm. Really good question. Um, yeah, uh, I've hired a lot of media buyers, you know, the last couple of years, dozens of them. Um, and it's tough because there's, I'm a media buyer. I'm a salesperson. You know, that's what we do. We sell for our clients, but we also sell to clients. Um, honestly, you need to know the account yourself. You need, it's really hard to hire someone for this position. If you don't understand Google ads yourself, I really recommend understanding it the best you can and having a really good interview process where you ask technical and meaningful questions about their experience and knowledge. I, I, I'm, I hire a lot of seniors and juniors and yep. I have a series of questions that I ask just to really see how deep is their knowledge. And it's so crazy that very few, less than 1% of these interviews, these, these people on the interviews actually can respond to these questions in a cohesive and understood way. And they actually do know what they're talking about. Examples of questions and write these down guys, because this is what I use on my interviews. Just something simple as what is the CTR and how is it calculated? And I'm just expecting them to give me the formula. I've had interviews with media buyers that have had 10 years experience managing hundreds of thousands of dollars. So they said on their resume, their CV and in the interview, and they, they couldn't answer these questions. Ask them, wow. how does the Google algorithm work? This is something that there actually are very few resources online about this. Our Google shopping course, we go deep into this because when you understand the algorithm, it's like seeing the matrix within Google ads. You can then understand exactly what to change to impact the bidding, the quality score, because these lead to the ad ranking, understand, understanding the ad ranking and how that places you in the auction, lets you know how much you're going to pay for clicks and how to beat out the competition. There's a lot to get into there, but basically just that simple question, how does the ad algorithm work on Google? And very, very few people can answer that question. The people that work for me now, they all answer that perfectly. They all knew that really well. They have lots of experience doing this, but that's a really good um, question. Another one is, how would you manage the quality score? And, uh, you know, a lot of people don't understand that quality score is made up of three parts, which is expected CTR, landing page experience, and ad relevancy. And this is, to me, beginner Google ad stuff. And uh, this is a great way to weed people out very quickly. So there's the interview process. There's a lot of questions you can ask. I wouldn't just spend two hours grilling someone. That's exhausting and you're going to scare someone off because keep in mind that you also want to be a good client as well. Um, and so you're going to have to pay good money to find a good media buyer. That's another thing. But as well, you need to be a good client. Good people don't want to work with, if I can say this, assholes. Like we would never work with an asshole client. Like if we sense that at all, Asking a lot of questions doesn't mean they're an asshole. Um, but if we, we get the feeling this person is going to be a hell to work with, uh, we, we're probably going to say no. Um, what you can also do, which I recommend, is asking them to do an audit of your account and ask them to do a video audit. That's really, really important. Uh, you can ask them to do that with Loom. There's a free version. And just get them to go into your account and just tell you what they would change and what they would fix. This does require you to have a bit of base work Google Ads knowledge so that you can know if what they're telling you is actually true or not. But a lot of good salespeople just flounder because it's you can see that they're just going to waffle the whole video and actually not give you any meaningful meaningful information I, I do this with a lot of my media buyers in the interview process and i've had 30 minute videos that didn't say a single thing that helped me and they just hoped that they could waffle through the whole thing and i just kind of i watched it on 2x speed and i, I was like man this is i can't believe this this is crazy so yeah that's something that you can do um yeah, yeah that's 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 going to be really really helpful um but yeah those are the two big things that, that i do um and that's, yeah, that's, that's going to be really, really helpful. The second big thing that you want to do, not just to hire someone, but to make sure they're doing a good job. 
And this is probably the hardest thing to do because you might hire someone and they're going to start slacking off once they get lazy. And I see a lot of agencies do this where they don't have internal processes and they just sit on a fee. They sit on an account, collect their fee. They don't do any work. I can see the change history. They're not logging into my, my store's account. I'm just like, what are you actually doing? What am I paying you for? Um, so I recommend having some sort of process where you know how they're going to report to you, um, how much work they're doing in the account, what they're doing, um, and getting that feedback. Um, the other, okay, this is what I was going to say. This is so, so, so powerful. No one talks about this. Make sure that when you meet your agency, you know who is going to be working on your account because likely you're going to meet the salesperson, the business development representative, and they're going to be very charismatic. They're going to sell you on the great work they're going to do. Uh, but if you don't know who's actually going to be doing the media buying, they might be terrible. You might also not have any chemistry. They might not understand your brand. Um, that's something that no, no agency is going to tell you that bit of tip. Like, um, you know, because, you know, they want to just give it to someone. They want to have the salespeople and the, the media buyers. Uh, but that's something that, you know, uh, I always, always have done. Uh, just make sure you meet them. And that's really, really important. Even if you meet the salesperson and then you say, hey, can you do an order of my account? Can you get the media buyer to do that for, for me, for you? Um, and then they record the video. So then you can actually see what they're like uh, on, on video. And that can be really helpful. Okay. Yeah, very good. I like this approach a lot where... You just ask a few simple questions and you're able to weed out so many people mm. early. And uh, if you guys just implement that one tip to your hiring process, uh, you are just going to save so much time. Oh, because, uh, that's crazy. You need to think of it like uh, if you were paying yourself a salary, these interviews, they're costly. You have an opportunity mm. cost there to work on something else. So, so make sure you have a few simple questions early you're going to get rid of 70-80% uh, of people already there. And then you can interview the ones that are worthwhile. And it's also respectful for their time because mm. uh, that way you don't go in-depth interviewing some people that have no chance at all. Um, but yeah, you mentioned the asshole clients a little bit there. <laughs> but there's also like some great stories. And mm. I know like this drives you and this drives myself as well to have a couple of those like huge impacts every quarter, every year that are pretty much life-changing for those people. And mm. the ones that uh, really stick uh, to your mind when the work is done, like it's not uh, how many millions uh, you created to this person or that person, like uh, money is just money, money is circling around, but uh, the meaningful impacts are the more interesting things. So can you Definitely. tell me like um, just one or two things that, uh, or like one or two meaningful impacts that uh, you have had on your clients' lives. Hundred percent, yeah. And those are the stories that really get me. And for our team, like we love sharing them amongst the team. Um, we actually have a channel within our Slack uh, where we actually share these wins that we have with clients, with each other. It's really important to reflect on these things, but especially when you can have a meaningful impact on a client, and not just a client, but their whole life. A good example of this is one client that I worked with. And they came to us and I didn't realize they were in such a bad spot. And um, we took them on and we grew their account from nothing up to about two to 300K in monthly revenue with a very solid profit margin. And I'd actually never met them in my life because it was, it was a totally remote relationship. I was over in Colombia when I, when I met them, they were in Australia. I eventually flew yeah. back and met them and we went out for coffee and they actually told me in person how much of an impact that my team and I had had on their whole life because it had allowed them to have a consistent source of traffic that was profitable. They were able to move out of a terrible apartment that had rats and broken windows and all this sort of stuff like that. One of them was incredibly overweight and depressed and he was able to uh, like get his life in order because he was able to live in a nicer place. He was able to, to, to cook nicer meals and all this sort of stuff, pay for someone to cook for him. Um, it was a really beautiful story like to hear this sort of stuff and also how it impacted their friends and their family. And it's, it's, that's an incredible thing. Yeah, you, make, you, make, you can make a lot of money. That's great. But when you can actually see it gives someone real happiness, and I don't think money necessarily buys directly happiness, but it gives opportunities and it can lift people out of a place that's really negatively affecting them in many different ways. And so that's what happened with these guys. Um, we're still good friends and um, I love them to death. And um, that sort of relationship, even if we end up stop working together one day, um, that will still be there because uh, they also did a lot for me as well. They, you know, I, they had a very positive impact on my life as well. So that's like a big one that I've had. Um, a lot of people that are able to quit their jobs. That's huge. Uh, when someone, 
they start this as a side project, maybe with their partner and they're both working full time and they're only able to work on it at night time. And then we take on all their marketing and then they're able to then quit their job and work on their dream full time. That's like the best thing ever. And they're just like, how do, what do I do with all my time now? You know, because like it's something I don't have a job, but I'm working on this thing. And um, that's really, really beautiful. So those, those are the big things that are, that um, really get, keep us going. Um, yeah. It's, it's awesome. Yeah, wow. Yes. Awesome stuff. Really, really good stuff. And uh, what I noticed there is people don't necessarily open up so much over zoom calls. So mm. we have had people that uh, have had a super big impact, but you never know about it because in real life, people are way more vulnerable. And when you meet them, mm. you meet them in person, like they're going to come up and uh, actually tell you this. So there's a lot of hidden wins as well as that mm. one. But the, I'm sure at this point, all the viewers, uh, they have pages upon pages of notes. Mm. I'd urge everyone, if they're interested in Google Ads, first of all, like uh, you have the knowledge now to get started. So mm -hmm. first thing to do is like, just go ahead and implement. Uh, there's no uh, reason to really like get too scientific about this. Just uh, get practical, get in there, open up an account, set up the merchant center and uh, get started. But uh, Sam here, he's humbly giving advice, like creating really good content. And we talked about this, like some people just doing it for the views. Like there's no value in their YouTube videos and uh, there's just like clickbait, et cetera. And I'm not going to have these people on this channel. Sam is the opposite of that. So there's a ton of value in that channel and uh, you can go and subscribe to that. Highly recommend it because only by improving your skills can you stay on top of these things. E-commerce is moving fast. There's over 1 million Shopify stores right now there. So you are not alone in this thing. And if you're not better than your competition, people are not going to buy from you. So mm. go over there. Now, also another resource here, there's tons of links down there on the description that uh, you can go. And these are the best videos, some of the best videos that uh, Sam has done and very relevant for this particular case as well. So that is uh, something to start from. But um, that's all for me. Thank you very much for watching. And thank you, Sam, for being a part of this channel. Thanks for having me. It was a pleasure. It's really awesome. Awesome. Likewise. Thank you. Take care. If you are an e-commerce business owner and you want to turn more of your current visitors into buyers, more of these buyers into repeat buyers, and maximize your profitability per order, then here is what you should do. First of all, subscribe to the channel and click the bell to get notified about my latest videos. I share valuable e-commerce information every Thursday. Second, visit growgurus.com forward slash tips. You can download our list of 10 e-commerce optimization tips that you can apply immediately and those will help your store convert more of your visitors into buyers. Third, if you already are on at least mid six figures in yearly sales and want to take your game to the next level, then check out growgurus.com and growgurus.com forward slash apply. Thank you.